interoperability bug in Impress. And you, uh, more specific, specifically, uh, it will be about files produced by PowerPoint and th their interoperability with Impress. So who am I? A quick um, description. And I'm Sarpak Demir. I go by QX, QX in the IRC most of the time. And uh, I was a Google Summer of Code stu student in 2020. Uh, and I've done physics-based animation effects for Impress. Um, right now, I'm still studying at Istanbul Technical University. Uh, I'm an electronics and communication engineering student there, and we have a club there. I served as chair of it for two terms. Right now, I'm also an intern of Collabor Productivity. So, let's begin. What are the rough steps for fixing an interoperability bug? Firstly, I think the most important part is understanding the problem and the bug, because this can be really complicated then it looks on the surface most of the time. And then, of course, we come up with a proposed fix that we'd like to implement how it would behave if it was working right. And we try to do that most of the time. Uh, these two steps are kind of interlinked, and we go be between that. A new proposed fix, try to implement it. And if that doesn't work, of course, anyone. And uh, lastly, when we are done, to ensure that this stay at uh, our work s keeps working. Uh, we implement tests for it, and that's quite important too. So let's start with an import bug from uh, a pptx file. We need to understand the bug first. So we are going to go through the bug report. And so most of the time, titles of the bug reports are quite misleading. and because uh, they just in a short um, sentence try to describe what went wrong. Uh, they most of the time, it is not possible to get it right most of the time. So after that, there's a description and comments. I think the most important part, usually if it's a populated bug, the co is the comments. There are less, if you are lucky, you can find lots of know-how there of uh, other QA engineers were going through the document and giving tips and stuff, so look out for that. Here I picked an uh, example bug um, that's about uh, image color appearing wrong, uh, and that is the title, but obviously this doesn't uh, really describe the technical problem with the bug. It's just any, there's an image and it opens wrong, and there are lots of attachments. I like to talk about them in right now because I really love them uh, when someone actually sends a bug report and also includes comparison images with it. It's really easy to understand the situation better before. Uh, of course, there are also the versioned ones because uh, LibreOffice gets constantly, constantly updated. And if this is an archaic bug, we can just look uh, at how it was when it was initially reported for 5.2 and how it is now. Uh, and we can actually compare those. So if you do that, I really love it. So investigating the bug documents, the most important resource are the bug documents that are in the attachment. And uh, for import, we need to compare uh, how it was actually appearing in PowerPoint uh, in the current situation and how it is in Impress. We need to try to reproduce the problematic part in PowerPoint. How we do that can differ. If we can find how it was actually done through the PowerPoint UI, it is better because we can las create lots of variations of it. Because most of the time when we are working with Office software, doing one thing can be done a lot of different ways. If you want to set something transparent, for instance, you can set the text transparent, set the whole box transparent. Maybe it's a group shape. We can make the group shape transparent. So there are lots of ways of achieving the same thing. If we understand it, how the user actually initially approached it, it is better. And um, finally, uh, after 
usually doing this is I think mo uh, most important part. If you can't do that, uh, exploring the produce file, unzipping, unzipping it, and browsing the contents, we, we will have to do that anyway. And for instance, for the bug case that I just showed here, um, the attached um, images showed that um, this is how it appeared on PowerPoint, and this is how it appeared on Impress. Uh, and when we look through the zip and uh, the pictures themselves, they are actually look how it looks on. They actually look how it looks on Impress. So, looking at this, uh, before starting anything, I'd like to isolate the problematic part, because, for instance, this graphic is actually uh, the same with PowerPoint. Uh, on Impress, so I just, uh, for instance, decided to focus on this graphic, uh, and to do that, you just create a new pa blank PowerPoint document, just copy it and paste it over so that you have a clean document with a problematic piece. And my first assumption, looking at these photos alone, was uh, PowerPoint was uh, applying some kind of color effect to it, and most likely, Impress didn't actually have uh, a similar thing. But uh, later, okay, not but yet, <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. So um, then after isolating the piece, I save the document, look through its contents by unzipping it or some uh, other way. And we, we go to the slide contents and we can find um, that there is this uh, BI level tag, uh, which means I believe binary level, and it specifies a black and white effect to the image. Also, there is an accom accompanying threshold value. And after finding this, uh, my hunch was still uh, that Power Impress doesn't have this black and white effect implemented, so we just can't import it probably, or something like that, because I didn't know about <laughs> stuff. Okay, uh, then um, I looked through the UI of PowerPoint, and look where could I apply this black and white effect, and I found it in uh, picture format color, and uh, it was under recolor, uh, so these three elements are actually black and white, uh, color effects and it goes through 25 percent, 50 percent, and 75 percent. Uh, so there are only three options for it. So I uh, went ahead and um, copied the same picture over three times and applied um, 25 percent for one, 50 percent for one, and 75 percent for the last one, and. This is uh, how it looks when I reopen it. Uh, when I open it in PowerPoint, and I later I uh, saved this and opened this in Impress, and all of them were black. So I was like, okay, my hunch was really correct, and I was going the right way. So there is no black and white effect implemented. Maybe import of it is not implemented, uh, but I thought I was in the right way. So uh, after that, I wanted to check if uh, these uh, tokens uh, or t XML tags were even uh, considered during import. So to do that, I just grabbed through OX, OX, source drawing ML for B BI level tag, and I found it actually. I didn't expect uh, this to be there because that no nothing was happening. So I went through uh, and uh, chased what happens to the color effect later, found it's here, uh, and it was setting something called color mode, and color mode mono was defined. So most likely, uh, actually, um, Impress had some way of uh, applying the uh, monochrome or binary level, all black and white effect. There are lots of names for it, it appears. Um, realizing this, okay. Where am I? <laughs> Sorry. And so I thought, uh, okay, actually there is import of uh, binary level, but we don't 
see any import of threshold values here. So I, maybe if I implement it, that should be okay. Uh, so I started to come up with a proposed fix. And so uh, back reason, when coming up with a proposed fix, bug reasons might be no implement report, non-existent feature, no straight uh, forward way of mapping the feature because sometimes two features might mean another single feature in other software. And, and uh, so for this case, let me just actually go a little faster because not much time. There is not much time uh, for the case with uh, TDF eight nine nine two eight. Uh, the one with the color um, binary level effect. Uh, I tried to implement the missing parts of the feature, uh, and so uh, what I realized was uh, I went to impress, and there was no way of defining any threshold values when we apply a color mode there. So the feature mapping one to one was not going to work. Now uh, we have uh, two options here. We can go the generalized way. Uh, which is which should be the best way to do it and uh, implement the missing parts of the feature, then import, then export, then for ODP and other formats. But this is relatively hard to do, and if this feature isn't that much important, um, it doesn't make sense to go through this. So I actually went with the easy to implement way here because uh, what I realized going through some code around there uh, was this was already being done for doton transforms and uh, some change color transform effects these effects were actually getting baked in during import time so it turns out we we or VCL had algorithms to uh, apply these effects um, but not really through ui or the document model so uh, realizing that, I decided to go with something similar to that and research and research to find uh, if I could do uh, the same for monochrome effect or binary level or <laughs> black and white. And I realized uh, this filter defined in VCL and uh, it, to my luck, it's already had a threshold defined to it and I went ahead and let me just go ahead. Uh, try to implement the actual fix. Uh, most of the time, PPTX imports stuff in OX source PPT, OX source drawing ML, or under OX source. And uh, for first part of it was uh, implementing the binary level threshold import. And uh, of course, we shouldn't forget that used to before uh, the color mode mono was working when it was exactly 50%. I forgot to mention that. That's <laughs> my bad. Uh, forgot to mention it while we were there. Uh, but turns out, when the threshold is actually 50%, it is the same with the feature uh, in Impress. So we can just uh, import it it as color mode mono and this gives out, this doesn't destroy the information of the picture itself so we don't bake the effect in and we can keep the original picture and also the effect on top. Uh, and uh, so we need to implement a special case for this too because information loss uh, should be minimized if we can do that. Uh, so it just checks if it's 50% and it doesn't do that if that's the case. In an, any other case, it just bakes the effect in through using the monochrome filter. Um, so this is the um, apl application part of the code. It just gets the graphic bitmap and the alpha mask Sorry. and just applies it. So uh, lastly, we implement, uh, we implement a test for it uh, and when you are uh, actually writing your test, you don't have to just stay, uh, you don't have to just write it for what you have just fixed. You can actually add some additional stuff that you think might break about uh, some edge conditions. It might be nice to add them too. And this is an um, example uh, code for import, import tests. Uh, we, it's under SDQA unit. 
usually if it's an imported, it should be under here. And actually, I had an export bug and some more stuff, but I guess I'm running out of time. Is, is it OK? OK. So uh, I also wanted to give some example about an export bug and what are the differences with that. So again, we need to understand the uh, bug that's important here we have. Uh, Automatic colors, white on dark background, or colors predefined. Lots of questions there, and it's important. Not exported to PPTX correctly. And going through the bug, bug this was a lucky one, because uh, in the com comment section, Timur mentioned that um, upon testing, uh, found, uh, found out that automatic font color for Word and Excel uh, exists, but not for PowerPoint. And turns out PowerPoint doesn't have automatic colors. But automatic colors are, by the way, is um, if the background is dark, uh, it just it is just white, and if the background is light, it is just black. Um, so the bug report already tells us that Word and Excel has automatic colors, but PowerPoint doesn't. So while we are coming up with a proposed fix, um, again. We can have uh, two solutions. Generalized solution would be here. Uh, generalized sh solution should always be sorry. This is the general case, uh, not just for the bu report bug file, and it, it should introduce the missing concept in its totality. Um, in this case, we need to have some observations first. Uh, and I already already talked about call auto being white or black, whether the background black or white, uh, is dark or light, sorry. Uh, color auto only cares about slight background and shape fill in impress. Uh, and it uh, prioritizes uh, shape fill first, then slight background, which makes sense. And I wasn't able to find anything else by testing impress myself. But uh, what I actually wanted to do uh, here was the generalized fix, because um, if I'm just putting some new ifs uh, upon my um, upon what I realized testing on impress that might not hold up to do uh, hold up to time when stuff change around uh, and autocolor actually does something different. So I wanted to find how does impress actually resolve color auto natively and export the resulting color. And an easy to implement way of doing. Not that, uh, but the fix for this bug would be uh, just checking the shape fill and slight background color. Uh, so going export stuff pointers here if you want to take a look later. And, and trying to do the generalized case, what I realized was uh, I grabbed some code and found out uh, edit engine impl implementation actually has a get auto color function. And uh, similarly, VCL fo font has gets color, get color for the font. And, but the comment stated here, it is pretty much obsolete. Um, I ended up trying to use them both, but no, none of them actually worked with the shape uh, background uh, situation. And VCL font get color already stated that uh, it is pretty much obsolete, so color auto actually most likely gets resolved during rendering, so I wasn't able to find what really happens there and uh, port it over on the export side. Uh, in this case, uh, doing this the easy way, uh, I added a check to make sure it was a PPTX document, then added some special checks uh, and exported it if it should have been white or black, depending on the background colors. And lastly, of course, I uh, implemented some tests for it, uh, checking the uh, path on export. Thank you all for listening to this talk. <laughs> I really appreciate it.